Welcome back to Billy Guns and Shipwrecks, I'm JP Fallais and this is the channel where we take you out for a dive. On today's dive we'll be going to look for the potential new shipwreck. We've been given some numbers off of two separate fishermen that believe that their ropes have been coming up with rust down, which is normally a good indication. Either that or there's some sort of big anchor. We're heading out between Herm and Sark. Herm is straight in front of us. Uh, Jetu's to our right and Sark is in the background there. You can just about work out Breku. We never turn down the chance to dive a new shipwreck. Shipwrecks do get found, they are very rare in Guernsey. There's been a lot of diving done over the years. It tends to be in the deeper water that you'll find new shipwrecks. So we're going to go and have a look. We think it's between 45 metres and maybe it's slightly deeper. Fingers crossed it's round about the 40 metres. Me and Matt's going to be doing the dive today and fingers crossed we find something. It's never guaranteed and sometimes you don't even find it on the first attempt. As the story goes there's been loads and loads of lobsters out of this location and also the seabed here seems to eat crab pots so we're unsure what we're going to see potentially we see a load of boulders potentially we might see just an empty seabed but unless you dive these locations you'll never know on this attempt we're going to just chuck a shot line down and me and matt are going to go down the shot line this is the anchor you can see hanging off the gunnel now so it's into the water for me and Matt, fingers crossed, we're seeing 45 on the depth sounder. So we're expecting quite a short dive. We've been given the rules by Keeney, do not go into deco, spend a maximum of 8 minutes on the bottom and then come back up. Really anxious on our way down and the visibility looks really really good here. You can see the seabed already. Well, sadly, the anchor isn't into a shipwreck. It's onto the seabed, and the seabed looks to me like it's like rice pudding. So it's broken flat stones. Just pop my light on very quickly and see what the seabed's made of. Seems to be loads of hydroids. Oh, and loads of steps. That'll probably explain where the lobsters are coming from then. Very quick plan, me and Matt split up, be about 10 metres apart. We're gonna swim up tide first, which is straight ahead. I'll go over Matt's right hand shoulder and we're at 42 and a half metres, so that's not so bad. So we're gonna swim into the tide for a little bit. The tide is still pushing north, uh, northeasterly. We're just gonna take our time to drift back with the tide. We're not gonna come up the shot line. So we'll just make sure that's uh, they're tripped before we leave it. Seabed looks really colourful here. Yeah? Nice and orange. Loads of hydroids and also loads of uh, uh, baked bean as well. Plenty of starfish. I'm going to turn my lights off because it's got a bit of backscatter and I want to be able to see as far as possible into the distance. Always check my air when I hit the bottom. I've got four minutes left already. That's a problem being super deep like this. We're only up on our scalloping gear and we're also breathing air, so we're going to go into deco pretty quickly. Right, I'm quite confident I've swum further enough. I can't see any shipwrecks. So I'm going to turn around and start heading back to the anchor line and try and find Matt. So he seems to have gone back out of sight. Take a look at all these steps. Plenty of places for lobsters to hide underneath here. Also, if you're trying to pull crab pots, potentially, yeah, you could lose a few underneath them, but I don't think they pose much danger. Right, there's Matt. He isn't actually that far away. Three minutes left. It's eight minutes total time to surface. 
it's going to rack up pretty quickly so now we're going to drift with the tide and just take our time looks like the anchor is nice and safe where it is should be able to pull that quite easy some elephant hide sponge there and every so often you'll see a, a, maybe a wrasse or something swim past I'm sure they're wrasse they're too far away to, to check but I'm sure they're probably wrasse there you go me and Matt just space out a little bit further just so we get a good span of the seabed see 10 meters in either direction let's take a look under one of these ledges see if we can find a lobster probably get conger under here as well nope this one's empty quite a cool environment to be fair stepped up like this obviously formed millions of years ago a bit of a sea urchin there there's a few sea urchins that's going to come back to me and we're going to end up sending the probably send up his delayed SMB just to let Richard know that we've been five or six minutes and we're going to be coming up soon far too much backscatter with the lights on it's unfortunate because it's bringing some of the nice colours out actually see what they are Still got 150 bar left, that's plenty of air. You can see Matt putting his camera around so he's getting ready. Look at the size of this. It's a boring sponge. Yep, getting ready with the delayed. Sending it from this depth is probably kind of the limit that you'd want to be sending it from. 41 meters. I've got one minute left. I might sneak into deco a little bit because we're covering quite a bit of distance here. That's it, zero left already. I might start shallowing up a little. I can still see the bottom, it's not the end of the world. We'll shallow up a little bit, an extra three or four meters will give me a little bit more bottom time. Plenty of fish darting around all over the place now. Unfortunately, I'm so far off the bottom now, I actually can't see what they are. We've come to a bowl or a dished area where the rock probably drops down a meter, I would say. This is normally where you find fish hiding, especially flatfish. They love to get into little areas like this. There's a one fish. So the espisseries and sulk, which ain't that far away from me, it's probably only about a mile away. Here we go, we're into DK. Given its depth, we're only going to get one dive to this depth today. And it doesn't look like there's any shipwreck here. That's not to say there isn't any shipwreck here. It's just we might need to shift over 20 meters. Deco's cleared already, and I'm into my safety stop. I love it when the sun comes down like this, especially when you're underneath another diver and you can see the just the silhouette. Matt's going up now. His safety stop finished before mine somehow. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but it has. There's loads of sea gooseberries in the water, and also comb jellies and selps as well. seconds left on my safety stop. Let's get the macro out and try and film one of these. It's actually feeding. 
This is a comb jelly. Obviously not a jellyfish. Look at the little mouth at the front, watch. Opens his mouth and just tries grabbing stuff. Me and Mish have actually seen sea gooseberries, two or three sea gooseberries inside the mouth of one of these things. I think they eat everything. Okay. Don't mesh. Go on then. Can she swim? <laughs> she don't know where she's making that. She might do. She's fair well play to her. Go for it, fair play. 10 out of 10. to stop off and have a look at the poffins on the way home. That's that, a poffin, that tiny little thing there. There's also a hole in the cliff where they're flying out of as well. Two dozen poffins baked in a pie. There they are, they're flying around. Oh, they do fly though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought they just done magic cages and winks. Yeah, that'd be amazing. What's Oscar Poppins' full name? Oscar Poppins? No, he's like, he got like Clarence something else. His full name is something like Claude Clarence. Oscar Claude Clarence Pop. Something like that. Poppin. <laughs> Thanks for coming along with us on another dive. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't find it this time. But don't worry, we're going to be heading out next Saturday for another look.